Welcome back to the channel, everyone. It's been a little while since I've released the video, but I wanted to reward you guys for listening to me for so long and for also being patient with me releasing content. I have tried to deliver and deliver content, but Q4, which is what the topic is today, uh, has really consumed me. So in terms of my own stores and my clients, I've been implementing a bunch of stuff and I just wanna take you and give you a bit of an intro as to the top 10 best scaling strategies that you can use this Q4 and for long-term e-commerce success. And guys, a little hint, it's not just about ratcheting up the budget. That's a part of it, but this is not gonna be the core focus of this. I'm gonna show you the strategies that I use for my clients and myself to build long-term businesses. And we're not focusing here on one-hit wonders. I want you to have a long-term business and that's what I'm teaching you. So let's get into it. And guys, make sure you like, comment, subscribe and stay tuned for a lot more content coming out, guys. So guys, acquiring a new customer can cost five times more than retaining an existing customer, okay? So if you even have a trickle of customers, you need to be focusing on the people you've already got. That's something that a lot of people miss, okay? Especially you guys that are getting consistent traffic, this is something you need to focus on, okay? Even if you have one customer, you're better off trying to sell to them than to someone else. And I know that the idea is a little bit hard to wrap around and you just wanna run ads and you wanna get money, okay? I get that, but it's not how it works. That It can be how it works if you focus on a short-term profit. And short-term, you can do well. Chances are you won't though, and you're better off focusing on the longer term. Another really interesting fact is existing customers spend three times more, guys. Focus on them. Stop forgetting your existing customers. Don't just treat them as an order number or a product or a number or a a dollar sign in your dashboard, okay? Focus on them and continue to sell to them. I'm gonna show you right now what I mean. So my first tip is gonna be reward your high value customers, guys. This is so important. And how you do this, you go into your customer dashboard in Shopify and you sort by people that have spent the most. You can do that in your Shopify dashboard. All of these top 10 strategies, guys, I'm gonna release a video on each one going into more detail, okay? This is kind of the more of the strategy I'm taking at the moment, doing top 10 things and then focusing on each individual component. So then I've got more topics to cover off, okay? Now guys, what I want you to do, once you've gone into your dashboard and you found your top, you know, 20% of customers, so just make an Excel sheet, depending how big it is, find your top 20% and make sure you put them on a different email list, okay, to what everyone else has. Now, you can do a once-off campaign or create a list within Clavio, and craft regular content geared towards them. Give them your best discounts. Let them know about new products first. Give them exclusive offers. Give them uh, discount vouchers. Give, give them in-store credits, yeah? Give them referral credits. A lot of this stuff can be automated in Clavio, guys, so it sounds like a lot of work, but once you create a little program, uh, center it around calendar holidays and things like that, and make sure it's topical to them. What you can do is you can start giving them free offers like free shipping, outright discounts, access to exclusive offers, free digital products. You know, if you run a hunting store, have a look at someone like Bass Pro. Look at the amazing content they do on Instagram, they do on their blogs, they do on YouTube, all across there, they're educating people and then talking about the products you might use within that field. And then so people go to them as they're seen as an expert within hunting, camping, outdoor niche, okay? Other things you can do is offer things like free extended warranty to them. There's so many things you can do, guys. So number one, reward your high value customers. Number two, this is similar, but this is your high frequency shoppers. And these are different people. As you're gonna see as we go through this, this is all about tailoring your marketing approaches to individual customers. The person that spends the most may not be in this high frequency shoppers list. The high value may just be buying big or higher ticket products, okay? And so they're gonna want a different offer to the high frequency shopper. There might be some overlap. We're still, we're looking for people that shop a lot. Now there's two things we can focus on them, guys. Again, go into your dashboard, sort by the number of orders. But what we're really looking for here is we wanna try and increase the amount these guys spend because they trust us. And two, we know that they shop a lot. But from here, what we wanna do is we wanna create offers that are gonna play on the fact that they're high frequency shoppers. So we've got them there, let's make them spend some more. So encourage pack buys, multi buys, uh, have blogs sent to them, uh, talking about products that can be used in tandem. You know, I recently was selling an industrial storage rack and this industrial storage rack, people were buying it 
in two, three, four, five, six of the one because they were putting them in their garages, in their sheds, and they needed multiple. They didn't just buy one. So you could craft an offer specifically to those people. Like if they're just coming and buying one of something, but they're coming frequently, let's try and turn them into a high value shopper. So that's number two, identify high frequency shoppers and make sure you send marketing material to them via, again, the same channels, email, text, messenger chatbots, uh, retargeting ads, the whole shebang guys. All of those tools can be used to bring people back to your store. The idea here is identifying the people we know, know and trust us, bringing them back, encouraging them to spend more. So obviously three, the area I want you to focus on is email. Email is still, to this day, the only actual source of communication where you own the list, okay? Your email list is yours. You can keep that in a spreadsheet and you own that, okay? You, people have opted in to your content, okay? To your products. Now, obviously, there's a bit of an overlap here. We're gonna be targeting those two people in those areas, but we wanna make sure we're segmenting even further down, okay? Making sure that if someone has bought something, this is especially the case for general stores. If someone has bought something within the outdoor niche, Let's not sell them car care products. They may not be interested. Focus on personalizing the emails as much as you possibly can, okay? You need to make these emails come across as you are speaking to that person. And there's a bunch of strategies. I've actually got a video on email marketing for e-commerce. I'll leave the link below so you can watch that. But a really, really important part of this is making sure it's personalized, it's relevant, and you're consistent with it, okay? Now, there's a fine line between spamming people and being consistent, but I think on average, people don't email enough, okay? People do not email enough. Most of the bigger successful brands email a lot. There's lots of things you wanna consider. Watch the video, but make sure you're focusing on email. Now, the most important thing and the easiest, quickest win, guys, is to, to perfect your abandoned cart recovery. Guys, you will be able to make free money by doing so. Guys, number three, make sure you're focusing on email. It's a great way that you can use this tool because I guarantee you, you're not using it to your advantage or as well as you possibly could. And I know a lot of brands I help, I'm in their analytics and they make a ton of money through email. Some of the brands I help have email lists of over half a million people, 750,000, a million people. And these guys make most of their money, their profit dollars through email. So guys, number three, focus on email. Number four, SMS guys, huge, huge, huge open rates. Get SMS bump, use it for abandoned cart recovery. It's got a huge click-through rate. No problems at all. And yeah, your click-through rate is gonna be anywhere between 20, 30, 35% is what SMS bump reckons. I see mine being around the 25, 30% mark. The ROI is more than 25X. It is huge. The ROI on SMS marketing is massive, massive, massive. Free money, guys, get on there, get the app, SMS bump, it's cheap. You pay per message and make sure you use it, Use it, be creative and come up with some campaigns to run alongside your email ones. Number five, branch out into other traffic sources. Stop relying entirely on Facebook, okay? I've said this time and time again, Google is a great, great platform and we've got shopping, search, display, and YouTube. Now, Google isn't gonna be the perfect way to market everything, okay? People need to be searching for something. So for new and novel products, might be a little bit harder, but what you can do is you can bid really, really low on the things that people might be searching for. If you've got a product that addresses a problem or is a solution or gives some great benefit to what something might be, someone might be searching for, you can use Google. You can use the display and YouTube network if it's a visual product. And you can also use shopping, but again, it needs to be people searching for something. I've got heaps of Google content, guys. Make sure you check it out. I'll leave links below to the free course, okay? And go through it, run through it, and you're gonna, under, you're gonna have a great understanding of the Google network. Some other really, really cool traffic sources are Pinterest, Messenger bots, Facebook groups, Snapchat, and influencers across the whole spectrum of all these social media channels. TikTok is another one that I'm starting to hear a lot more about, but it seems to be geared more to younger customers, but it's growing very, very fast, okay? My suggestion though, guys, is master one traffic source, slowly branch out into the others. If you're doing Facebook, retarget on Google as well. If you're doing Google, retarget on Facebook as well. Master one, slowly begin the other or outsource it, okay? Number six, regular blog posting. You can tie this into email, guys, 
and it is actually a really good strategy to make sure that as part of your email strategy, you are using blog posts, okay? Again, these are long-term things. People that are just sitting there adding products, okay, at some point are gonna have a catastrophic issue. I see stores and I've encountered it myself time and time again. You have a store, it's doing well, some big hiccup happens, you haven't got an email list, you haven't been using email lists, you haven't been using SMS properly, you haven't got a blog post, you haven't got recurring customers coming back, you're neglecting your existing customers, and you know what? Your sales go to zero. So create things like the top 10 Father's Day gift guide, best travel accessories, the ideal gift guide for insert niche name, okay, the tech lover. I've left some examples here of what I'm talking about. These are also gonna help your SEO guys Store SEO, again, free sales. Have a look here, there's some examples. So the best gift for car lovers, 50 gift ideas that totally impress your wife. The sky's the limit with these. It's soft selling. You can either promote your own products or be an affiliate doing this, okay? So another way you can make money. So that's number six, regular blogging, guys. Make sure you're doing it. And don't listen to people that say you don't need it. It does help, okay? I'll tell you when it helps though, okay? It helps when you're already getting traffic and sales or if you have a lack of social proof, which I'm gonna to get to, this helps build that. Because generally speaking, Shopify stores don't have blogs, and one that does seems more legitimate. Now, number seven, creative retargeting, okay? Get creative with your retargeting. Don't be boring, and make sure you're tailoring it to each individual step. Talk to people like you need to act like you're, you're reaching through that phone and speaking to that person on social media or wherever it is, okay? You need to treat people that visited your store differently to people who viewed a product page. People that visited your store are not yet interested in buying necessarily. So you might need to send them ads of social proof. So people using your product, uh, building trust about your brand, telling them more about what you do, building that up. You can use things like video view campaigns to do that, to get more reach. You don't necessarily have to start off with a conversion campaign. Then based on that, you might retarget them. You might send them a carousel ad of you know where they visited, which part of the store, if they visited your outdoor furniture page, then you can send them a carousel ad with outdoor furniture. Or you can speak about more about your brand and talk them and walk them down this funnel, okay? So someone that viewed a product page, you know them potentially interested in buying. Now, it might have been by accident, but if you put a product in front of them, they're more likely to buy than someone that just visited your store. Again, if someone adds to cart, you know they're interested, something stopped them from buying. So address any concerns they might have. Now, they might be concerned you've got slow shipping. Send them an ad going, we have really fast order processing or our shipping times are X, but you're saving Y. Wish does a really good job at that. Can you wait 20 days for great prices? That's what they do. So there's no reason why you can't. Or you can say, I saw, we source products locally in the US if you're selling in the US, you know, if you've got a US supplier. Again, treat everyone differently. The person who purchased, you wanna get them to come back. So use the strategies I mentioned in the first two examples. The person who purchased, speak to them differently. Give them a discount code. Thank them for coming and shopping with you. Show them a new product. There's so many things you can do. What I like to do, guys, is I list all my competitors or as many as I can find I find people that are doing really good ads and I spend a few hours a week going through and seeing what are people doing? What's doing? What's trending on BuzzSumo that I can use as hype within my current products so it's relevant and I'm speaking more to that specific person. It has to be within that niche though. So have a look around, see if you can tack onto things. What If it's a holiday, come up with uh, Halloween retargeting for Halloween, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, all these different things. There's so many holidays coming up and I'm building a Q4 Bible, guys which I will show you all once it's finished. Okay, so seven, creative retargeting, make sure you're doing it and you're gonna see more sales. Now, focus on getting social proof. Look at how nice and bright this page is. It's a drop shipping store, but all they've done is down the bottom, they've got an Instagram account and it's happy customers using, wearing their products. And this helps a lot, guys. Also having reviews on your products really, really helps. You can use these sort of images as social proof and you can use them in your retargeting ads. You know, here's Jenny enjoying her, you know, summer dress, summer top, sorry. So here's Jennifer enjoying her new summer outfit. 
you know, she bought blah, blah, blah. And, and just talk about that, guys. Build your brand up, develop a voice, learn your customer, and then address their problems. Once you have social proof, it's so much easier to make sales because have a think about why influencers became popular. People saw other people using the product that they looked up to. They knew it was good because otherwise, why would this person be promoting it or using it? And they did it in a way that the person could see themselves doing it or using it, okay? So number eight, very important, focus on getting social proof for your products and your store slash brand. Leading on from that, build a brand in a community around your store, guys. This is so important. What you need to do to do this, guys, and I teach this in the Google Ads playbook, which I'll leave a link below, you need to have a deep understanding of your customer avatar. When you do this, product research becomes so much easier because you know their needs, their deepest desires, their greatest fears. What compels them to get involved or buy something? You need to understand that. A lot of this stuff is understanding the human psyche, psychology, okay? Focus on building high quality content, guys. You need a great site. You need images, videos, or custom ad creative. I'm gonna add a whole branding section to the Google Ads playbook. At the moment, it's a little bit scattered, but for all those people that have bought it, guys, I'm building that for you right now as we speak. I'm implementing a lot of stuff that I myself have been doing and what I've been studying and what I've seen myself that works in winning products and winning stores and what other clients that I'm implementing for them right now, I'm seeing, okay, what's the general trend? They all have amazing ad creative. They all have at very least, at the very least branded, loosely branded stores and they've got nice names that are catchy. We can then do easy Google advertising because people are already searching for it. Highly visual, high quality images with their logos on them. And overall, it's a nice shopping experience. The sites suit the customer and people feel comfortable shopping there. And their products, here's the other one guys that I'm seeing, their products that are not only branded, but they have mass appeal. So they're products that almost anyone could use or would use. From here guys, try and be a little bit different or have just a small unique angle in what you do. Just a slight angle. You might be, you might come into a space that targets millennials, but then you might niche down lower. Millennials who are currently at college in their freshman year or something. You know what I mean? Like keep digging down and find a little niche or find a different angle to brand something and become known for that. Keep emphasizing it. Use it in your emails. Develop a voice. From here, guys, you can definitely build a Facebook group to help promote your store. I've seen it done really, really well. I believe. Joe Cody, I've got, he's in my group. He is relatively active in there. I have seen him and he uses Facebook groups to promote his print on demand products because there's such a strong following in the niche. He's able to make money from that. So if you're interested in learning more about that, guys, he's got, follow him. He knows his stuff from here, seasonal offers and campaigns. This helps build your brand because people assume if someone builds a seasonal campaign, they've been around a while. Very few people are gonna sit there and come up with ongoing seasonal campaigns. The more people see this, they're gonna think you're legit, they're gonna come back, they're gonna shop from you. As I said, proper email campaigns. All this stuff together that I'm talking about is all interlinked, but there are ways you should be thinking about to scale. Again, stop sitting there thinking of just ratcheting up that budget. Focus on these things. Guys, there's gonna be a lot more of this to come in a future video, okay? Especially for those people in the Google Ads playbook they're going to get a whole module on this, okay? And lastly, number 10, guys, outsourcing. Do you know why this is going to help you scale? Because you are going to be able to focus on the things that matter, okay? You need to bring in experts eventually to help you do what they're good at, okay? You might not, you're never going to be good at everything, so you need to focus on what you're good at and what makes money. If you do this, you're going to be able to scale faster because all of these things I said above there's no physical way that everyone can do all those things without any help, and you're not gonna be good at them all. So make sure you, you the moment you start to or already have a bit of cash flow, make a list of the tasks you're good at. Make a list of the tasks you like doing, and then make a list of the tasks that would be relatively easy to outsource. Now, an easy task to outsource is something that doesn't require huge skill, but rather is something repetitive that you could document, come up with a process flow, and show someone how to do it, a VA, uh, a family member. A fa family members are a great one. 
I really like that because one, you're keeping it in your family and two, you can trust them. It's really, doing this is also important for your mental health, guys. It's so hard some days. Like even today, I really, really struggled today to come up, come on camera, do everything I needed to do and just show up. It was a hard day. Mentally, I just was going, oh man, my brain is all over the place. I'm thinking about these ads over here. I'm thinking about this store that's having problems over here. I'm thinking about this client that's, you know, the ad isn't performing or I'm thinking of this, what I need to do next. If you don't outsource, your head will explode eventually, okay? Now, there's a whole list of skills you're gonna to need to learn to do this. One, how to source people. Two, learning how to effectively train or equip people for success. This is so important. These things are all things I'm gonna help elaborate on, guys, but it's gonna be, again, another module that I need to come up with, okay? Now, managing them long-term is different to just training them, okay? Managing long-term is going to come up with all these different things. Bitterness comes up. Jealousy. There's so many things you need to learn in this space. But from here, you also need to learn dealing with problems of people failing to meet your expectations. It's hard. You're going to have to do it. But again, outsourcing, definitely something I want to help you guys talk you through because it's something I'm doing right now. It's something that personally, I'll admit, I'm not great at it. I'm trying to get better. So I'm surrounding myself with people who are good at it and I'm learning from them and I'm trying to outsource Anything that I shouldn't be doing, for example, I'm no longer going to be doing my video editing. I need to pay someone to do that. There's no point in me video editing because I suck at it, okay? So guys, I really hope you like this video. It is a little bit different. I hope you've enjoyed the angle I've taken with it. If you have liked it, please give the video a thumbs up. It really, really helps me. I want this channel to grow. I want to help people like you. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. And guys, if you want more help, I've got my free Google course the link's right there. You're going to be able to download these. The link's going to be below, okay? So download these, get all the free stuff there. If you're interested in any of the paid stuff, contact me to see if it's right for you. We'll book a call, something like that. Uh, I don't want to, I want to make sure that you are getting the best possible value. And please let me know in the comments below how I can help better service you, my audience, my loyal members, okay? See you soon. And guys, the Q4 Bible is coming out very soon. Make sure you stick around to see it.